Yeah, I was actually going into the Ross to steal a pair of shoes. So to what? <laughs> the to fact that you offered to buy me some, hey, hey, I'll take it. Yeah. All right, we're here with Nicole. How are you doing today? Um, okay, I'm okay. Yeah, do we have permission to record you and post this interview online? Sure, on what, on what part of my online, like where? YouTube. YouTube, oh my God. My sons are big YouTubers. All right, Nicole, how old are you? 37. 37, you look very young. No, I don't. You do. <laughs> Where are you from, Nicole? I'm from Moreno Valley, okay. California. Nice, and where were you raised? I was raised in Moreno Valley, but born in Corona. Corona, okay. Yes. And then you went to high school out there? In Moreno Valley, yes. Yeah. I went to two different high schools. Which ones? I know Marino Valley very well. Canyon Springs High School and Valley View High School. Oh, okay. Did you graduate? Um, I got my GED okay. in Seattle, Washington. Okay. So what was uh, your high school like years like? Were, were you popular? Um, I wouldn't say I was really, I mean, I knew people, but I ditched all the time, so I don't know. I wouldn't say I was popular, no. Did you um, have both parents in the home when you were growing up? No, just my dad. Or your dad? Yeah, well, my dad was with my mom. They were high school sweethearts. Yeah. Then he got with my little brother's mom, and she was around until about fifth or sixth grade okay. and then when she left the house then it was just me and my sister and my dad okay hey, were you in contact with your mom um on occasions oh okay yeah. so did you was your father a good man he was a good provider okay it's a good provider okay uh you still talk to your folks i don't talk to my dad no it's been about five years since i talked your to your mom him. my mom i talked to mm -hmm. yeah okay and then, was there any uh, abuse in the home or by any adults while you're growing up, sexual or physical? No, no, no abuse. I would say I was treated differently than my sister and my brother, but not abused. No, okay. um, no, not abused. How differently? Um, a lot different. Like, I guess. I was the kid that my dad didn't want. Like he wanted my mom to have an abortion when she found out she was pregnant with me. Yeah. And she didn't and so. Who told you all this? My dad told me that. Oh. Yeah, and then um, that, he didn't want me to be a girl either. He wanted me to be a boy really bad and I wasn't oh. a boy. So he was just, I think he has resentment towards me for that yeah. or I don't know. But they broke up before I was even born, my mom and my dad. How would you describe your dad, if you were to describe him? Just a hard worker, just right. a, like he likes to work hard and work. Was he emotionally there for you? No. No. Who was there for you? My grandma and grandpa, but they were, they moved. They uh, moved uh, to Seattle, Washington. Okay. I eventually ended up living up there with them. Oh, you know, that's why you went to Washington, okay. Yeah. Now, did you dabble into drugs in high school or before? Um, in high school, I mean, yeah, I think everybody does a little okay. bit, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I tried everything. But you didn't get hooked on anything in high school? Hooked, no. Okay. No. Have you ever had a problem with drugs or alcohol? A problem? Yeah. Addiction or anything like that? Yeah, I did. Well, I'm gonna say, I would say that maybe alcohol, I did really bad. Okay. But I don't drink anymore. I haven't drank in five years. Sober? Three, four years. So you're completely sober? Four years. Um, yeah. Did yeah. you do it on your own or AA or something? No, I just, on my own, I just stopped. It was pretty bad. It was hard. It was rough. Oh. So you haven't had a sip or you occasionally drink? No, I haven't had a sip. I can't. If I occasionally drink, I'll go off okay. the deep end. Yeah. I oh, well, congratulations you don't on drink. that. <laughs> you, don't want to, you don't want to see me drinking. Yeah. Drinking. <laughs> what did you end up doing for work later on after high so school? So I think that that was what my addiction would be. And I think that it was money, it was money. I was okay. definitely addicted to making money or making a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I found out at a young age, like on my 18th birthday, actually like a bunch of my friends were like, oh, you're 18, we're gonna take you to the strip club and yeah. we're gonna have a good time. And so I went and um, I got one of those birthday dances on stage that they yeah. give. And, Which um, strip club? Flesh, Club Flesh. In San Bernardino? Mm -hmm. The Notorious Flesh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't that place get uh, raided, raided and, and everything down, yeah. for hot prostitution? Yeah. Okay. Yep. What year was that that you worked there? 
Uh, I worked there up until it closed down from okay. 2003. Okay. I mean, I well, I I went from there to a couple different clubs. I mean, I worked all over. Okay. But that was my main. That was okay. my main spot. Okay. So tell me all about your life there. Well, on my first night, I was 18. I had the birthday dance on stage, and the girls, the all the girls from the club, did a dance on me for my birthday, and all my friends were cheering me on, and like they started taking my clothes off. The girls, the yeah. dancers, and um, after the birthday dance was over, the manager of the club approached me and was just like, mm, "You should probably think about dancing. You would make a lot of money here." Yeah. And, um, I was easily influenced, just very easily influenced, and so I was like, okay, I'll try it out, you know? Yeah. And the first night, I made $1,000, and like, for me, that was a lot. I was just turned 18. For anybody, in 2003? Well, the very next day, the very next day, I went to work for the first time, and, yeah. and, it, and it was $1,000, and, and I, I just was hooked after that. 1000 again, the next night? Oh, yeah, no, I made easy 1000 every night. Every night, in e 2003? Easy. Easy, yeah. That's a ton of money. Did you? It was a lot. What did you use the money for? Did you save for So of it? I mean, I got my own apartment. I moved out of my dad's house. I was maybe only supposed to be a junior in high school at this yeah. point. So I was like the only junior in high school that had her own apartment. I drove a Cadillac. I was making. This was in high school. Yes, I was making. You're underage. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was 18. Okay. But I, I, I got held back in kindergarten. So really, I was like, you know, but yeah. I was 18 at a, as a junior. In high school, if that makes sense. But um, yeah, I, I was. What's doing the most it. you got from a client? At one time. Yeah. I would say ten thousand. Did you ever have sex with a client at work? You can, oh yeah. They're closed down now, so you can talk. Oh about yeah, it. no, I did. Oh for sure. Okay, how does that go down? Um, what do you mean? Okay, so they come in and ask you, or you just. I was offer? blown away. I was blown away the first time I discovered that that stuff went on in yeah. there because I didn't know at first. Yeah. And then I went back there with a guy, and he was like telling me that you know so um I, let's do i, I want to do everything and i'm just like what are you talking about like you can't do that here yeah he's like what are you talking about it, it goes on here all day long like yeah. you know because it was going on there and i had no clue that place is notorious oh it's bad way bad yeah. and i didn't even know i was like I, they brought me into the lion's den but yeah. i didn't even know it and um so i guess he made me an offer i couldn't refuse what was the offer he he said he was going to give me a thousand dollars. Yeah. And it was like maybe five minutes. Wow. In the VIP, like a three-song VIP. So so it was easy to make good money. Oh yeah. It was and what about the girls that weren't sleeping with the the clients? They all were. They were all sleeping with. The they clients. all were. That's what strippers told me. They most uh, most strip clubs they're always having sex in there. Yeah, they all are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so all the girls. And if were, they're not doing it at the club, they're doing it after. After. At the motel. Oh, interesting. What was the worst experience you ever had with a client? Um, okay, so this guy, he was uh, this, this Paisa guy, right? Yeah. He's um, just dirty. You can tell he just like maybe got off work. He just didn't look good. He didn't speak any English, and he's like one of those guys you see outside of Home Depot, right? Yeah. That's what my first impression was. Anyways, yeah. I talk him into a dance, and I talk him into the VIP, and so... Of course, he wants the full thing, everything, and so I'm just like, oh my God, rolling my eyes, and I was hurting to make money that day. Yeah. I don't know what, he, he, he was below my normal price, but I went for it anyways. Yeah. And um, I always used protection, I always had protection when yeah. I did that. And he ended up slipping off the condom uh, right during the dance. Yeah. And um, I noticed that he had like, he went like everywhere inside me. It was gross, I almost threw up. Uh, I ran to the dressing room, I like cleaned myself out. Uh, I was like mortified. I had to go home the next day. I went like to the clinic. Like I, yeah. I was mortified. It was disgusting. He uh, did he get kicked out? Did you tell the? Oh, you can't. No, he left anything. right after. Oh, okay. I mean, like he he ended up like doing the right when this dance is over. He just went. He just left. Wow. You know? How much he did he pay you? For he that? knows what he did. Um, I you know it was so long ago. Yeah. I don't remember. I just know that it was not. It was below my normal. Below around. What about the management there? They know this going on. Oh, absolutely. And they're in on it. Oh, absolutely. So we tip, that's why we tip our managers. So you tip the managers. So if you're going to have sex with somebody, they watch the doors. 
and then make well, sure. Well, they would tell me, okay, so like if you were a, a top, one of the top girls, like you tipped better than the yeah. other girls. So I always tipped my manager really well because he took care of me when a guy came in the parking lot who was driving like a Rolls Royce or a Bentley or like a nice car. Yeah. He would tell me to go grab him right when he came through the door before any of the other girls got a chance to get oh. to him so that I can get that money. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Any positive experiences with a client? Did you ever get into a relationship oh, yeah. or mm -hmm. sugar daddy or oh, something? Oh, yeah. I okay. had a sugar daddy for uh, 10, 11 years. They tip you good? He's, yeah, he he took care of me. He supported me and my kids oh. for uh, Oh, how many 10, kids do you have? Uh, identical twin boys. Oh, how old? They're 13. Okay, they live with you or? They do. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they have a good life? Um, Yeah, you know, they used to be really spoiled. And then when I when my life abruptly changed yeah. recent, yeah, and um, we had to, you know, we were homeless for a while. We were yeah. homeless, okay. um, but we recently are living somewhere and renting a room from someone. So I okay. mean, but yeah, we, we had to push the shopping cart down the sidewalk and all um, that shit. We lived that life. We're gonna come back to that part, okay? Yeah, it was um, terrible. I wanted to know how how you're introduced into the adult industry, adult films. Okay. At the club at, at Flesh, okay. I was dancing for a guy, and he was like a scout, right? Like yeah. he would go and like, um, my phone is ringing. He would get girls. Um, so yeah, this guy, his name was David. Yeah, I remember him, and he was the ugliest motherfucker I ever seen in my life. Yeah. He was so gross. Okay. Anyway, so he's like, so you're doing it here anyways in the back room. Yeah. Why not do it on camera for more money, you know? And yeah. like, I'm so naive and just freshly 18 and just like yeah. easily influenced. Yeah. I went for it and didn't realize the effect it was going to have on me later in life. I think I just was like, oh, who's going to ever know? No one's going to ever yeah. know I did that, you know? Yeah. And, um, everybody knows now. Everyone knows? Oh, yeah. Girls were mean to was me. Was for a big company? I had some girls that didn't like me in high school, I think, printed a picture of me with a big old dick in my mouth, a given head. Oh. and um. Like put it in an envelope and put it in my mailbox addressed to my dad so my dad would open it and see oh, like stupid shit like that, you know? Oh, like just wow. fucking kids are mean, dude. How long were you in the industry? Um I was a dancer on and off for ten years. What about the porn industry? Uh, the porn just really short, like maybe eight months, nine months. How much money did you make? A lot. Okay. I don't know. It was a lot. Would you recommend that lifestyle to a young woman? No. Okay, tell us why. Because it damages you. And I think I just barely learned how to actually enjoy sex, okay. you know, like yeah. it was a chore. Yeah. It became a job to the point where I didn't even want to have sex, like with my boyfriends, my husband, yeah. nothing. I was like dreading it. I would act like I was sleeping when I really wasn't sleeping to avoid having to do it. Yeah. Like it just, it fucked me up big time. Like I didn't know how to really enjoy it. I didn't yeah. realize that there was, it was a good thing. Like sex is supposed to be a good thing and not yeah. a negative thing. And it just damaged me really bad. Like it did. So you wouldn't recommend this to anybody? No, because I mean, and I'm lucky that I could even enjoy sex today. Like really I'm lucky yeah. because most girls don't ever enjoy it again. Like they'll always look at it. Like if I'm not getting paid for it, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of, that's why a lot of girls become lesbians or they just, I don't know. But it did, it damaged me up until maybe three years ago. I okay. Did you get therapy and counseling? No. Okay. No, I, I didn't, but I think that there were certain men that came in my life that helped me get yeah. through that and like opened me up to seeing the good in it, I guess, you okay. know? Is there a safe way to become a stripper and you can get out of the lifestyle yeah. and make a lot oh, of money? Oh, I did get, I did make a life for myself. I got out of it. I, I had met a sugar daddy. Okay. He uh, was at, the, he pulled up in the club. The manager told me to go grab him because he rolled up in a Rolls Royce or some shit like that. You yeah. know, he's like super rich. I'm not going to say his name, but super w yeah. rich, well-known person. Yeah. Um, and he was, a, he had his own private jet, shit like that. And he oh. literally supported me and my kids and got me out of the club because when he bought his dance, he didn't want sex. He didn't want none of that. Yeah. He just wanted to talk to me, and then at the end of the dance, he handed me a thousand dollars, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And that yeah. was like my first night back to dancing in yeah. years. Well, it had been a few years because I just had my kids, yeah. 
and um, I was going through a breakup and I needed money and so I was like fuck it I'll just go back to my roots and just go dance again you know um, so I did and it was my very first night back and I was just so happy that I didn't have to like fuck anyone for money you know yeah. that he just gave me that thousand dollars and I was like I can go home now like and he's like you know what you don't ever have to come in here again if you don't want to you just come see me every week and I'll take care of you and he did for like 10 years Okay, so and he did. He bought my boobs for me. He did. He like he bought me a housekeeper, a live-in housekeeper. Wow. That she helped me potty train my kids. Like she was great. Her name was Consuelo, and I love her to death. And she still oh. keeps in touch. You still talk to her? Yeah, she still keeps in touch. And and you know he helped me get my business. I became a businesswoman, and I opened up my own pet grooming salon. Oh, awesome! And I love what I do. I loved grooming dogs, and you know it just was like. Something not a lot of strippers get to say that they can do. Like get out of getting out of the club is the hardest part. Yeah. But I found something that I love to do and I did it and I was successful for nine years. My grooming shop was open. Okay. Where uh, was it? It was in downtown Riverside. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was called, um, well, I'm not going to say what it was called. Nah, that's up to you. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm sure people will recognize me if they, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know how big, whatever. I don't know, YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. Uh, well, I'm oh. just, I'm kind of being naive about this too. Like yeah. I was the porn industry, maybe. I don't yeah. know. I'm going to probably regret it later. <laughs> no, uh, this is more of an educational channel. I wanted you to be honest about what you thought about the business. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't take anything back. Okay. I like, I, like, I, I think that I went through the experiences I went through and I'm grateful for them because I wouldn't be Nicole today, who I am yeah. today without those experiences. And so I'm kind of grateful even for my misfortunes, I guess you could say, you know, okay. yeah. made me who I am. So, so after the, your experiences with sex work, you got into grooming? Um, Anything yeah. else? Yeah, I went to school for grooming and dog training and, um, you know, while I was dancing, I was doing school for grooming and I, you know, I danced still on the side and, and made money. I mean, I was a hustler, go-getter, like I always wanted to have money. I always had money. Okay. Always. So you're totally clean now, no drugs, alcohol? Oh, why do you keep going back to that question? Do I look like I'm on drugs? No, not at all. This, this is an educational channel. You know, I just want to. Um, I mean, if you are struggling, I can possibly help you. I've helped a lot of people, and there's also very kind subscribers that can offer support or advice. And I'm going to get your uh, email later and your Cash App. And you know, if you touch somebody, there's a lot of kind people in America, yeah. a lot of compassionate people that may be able to help you. I'm not just asking it for my own, uh, you know self-interest or anything I kind of just want to okay well I'll story. be honest I'll be honest yeah. then I, I, I um, lost my dog grooming business because I did start doing drugs I did um, somebody got me started on drugs and it was kind of how I quit alcohol oh. um, so yeah and it was there was a boyfriend of mine who introduced me to um, intravenous drugs oh. and then that really messed me up bad like I wouldn't say messed me up. I was a big I'm a big girl I knew what yeah. I was doing you know yeah. what I mean it's nobody's fault but my own yeah. but I let like a lot of stuff that I cared about before I let it all go yeah and um yeah I screwed up I screwed up bad but it was a lot of stress too and I'm not as stressed as I was when I had my shop so I guess maybe it was for the best yeah. I guess but you know I could always open up another shop when my kids are grown and they don't yeah. require so much of me because right now they just like, they are 13, you know, and they can go this way or that way. And like, I want them to be good kids, you know, and if I'm working and not spending time with them like my dad was doing, then they're gonna just maybe fall into the bad people like I did or bad choices. And you know, I just wanna be there for them because I didn't have that. That's commendable. And I don't wanna get too deep into it. You don't sound like you wanna talk about it, but let me ask you this. Um, have you been to rehab or try, try to get help for your addiction? No. Okay. Have you ever, are you struggling with it now or are you done with it? No, I'm not struggling with it now, but it's it's kind of my downfall. It was my downfall. Okay. You yeah. know, if you ever do start it again, do you know where to go to get help? Yes. Have you ever tried NA? I have. I, well, I got a, D, I get a DUI and yeah. I was forced to go. Okay. And um, I actually kind of liked it. It was cool. You ever need any help with rehab or any questions, you can always contact me. That's um, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's all. I don't want to get too deep into it because I can tell you're getting emotional, so I don't want to push those buttons. <laughs> um, just the last few questions. We're almost done, okay? okay. Uh, I know you got to go. You got important things to do. Yeah. So have you ever been to jail? For my first time ever on June 1st, yeah, I did go to jail. You did? Yeah. Okay, no, no, no felony, misdemeanors? It was a felony. A felony of possession of a stolen vehicle. Oh, how long was that? June 2nd? June 1st. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, my kids were homeless. Yeah. And uh, I have a bunch of stuff I'm lugging around with me, and like I just didn't want to lug it around. It was hot. It's hot yeah. as hell out here. You know how yeah. it is. Yeah. And um, I just it was just sounded better to steal the car and go like that and then, then have to drag my kids on the side of the street in, in shopping carts and like have to walk to where we're going and so like yeah I fucked up I stole a car and I got I got caught and okay. um, I went to jail and I haven't been to court for it yet my court date is like the beginning of next month actually so I'm hoping that it's yeah. not I'm hoping they drop it really hopefully they will they hard me you gotta so. be careful don't be stealing stuff call me if you need some shoes or something <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go buy you some shoes right now. A couple of shoes, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't want you to be going back to jail. I know. Um, it's not worth it. It really isn't. I would not survive there. What's your most cherished memory in life? My most cherished memory? I miss my grandma. Uh, when did she pass away? She, oh, years ago. It's been a while, but. Ew, I feel like my mom, she cries all the time, and I don't oh, hate okay. that. Oh, it's my God. Okay. But she used to take us to that swap meet that... Um, Bel Air. No, the one, the van, the drive-in. Uh-huh. Remember they have it? Like, a long time ago, they'd have it every weekend, dude. And we'd go, and we got to pick out whatever we wanted, and we can... And then we would go to the grocery store, and we got, like, those teeny bopper magazines, like yeah. Teen Bop. And, yeah. Mm, it was time. fun. Childhood was so easy. Yeah, make that... Ch make your kids... Ugh. Make your children uh, have those great memories too. Oh, I do. Oh yeah. my God. Get if back you knew my kids, like they're spoiled. Trust me. Get I, back into the pet grooming. The animals make me happy. Oh, I am. I do. Do you have a little dog or something? I do. I do. I groom. I still groom. Okay. I still groom. I just do it on the side now, um, like at my house instead of um, at the shop. Because I had a, a, a shop, a place. Okay. But the landlords raised the rent on me so much that I couldn't afford it anymore. They like pushed me out. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they raised the rent so much. Yeah. Um, so I, I ended up couldn't afford it anymore. I had to, I had to leave the shop. Yeah. Then I got a job at PetSmart. And, yeah, which one? Around here? Uh, Marina Valley. Okay. And, but I got, I think, well, I just kind of stopped going to work because my car got stolen and yeah. I couldn't make it to work. Yeah. And so like, I don't know, I just, I didn't have face to even call them. Like I just yeah. stopped going. Like, which is really irresponsible and unprofessional, and I know that, but like, I'm just one of those people that I have a hard time like explaining myself, yeah. especially to my boss who's younger than me by like 10 years, 15 okay. years, you know? I just yeah. couldn't do it. Like, okay. I still have my loyal clients that come to me, and they'll, they won't go to anyone else. Like, they only take their dogs to me because I'm the shit. I'm, yeah. I'm super good at it. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm not like being cocky, but I'm confident. Like, I am pretty good groomer. Where would you like to see yourself in two years? In two years, I want to live on my own without roommates because I just don't live good with people. I just want my own place. Yeah. And eviction is why I have a hard time with that one. Yeah. Not that I don't have the money. It's the eviction is impossible. Do you know it's more likely for a sex offender or a felon to get approved for a place to rent than someone who has an eviction on their record. If you have an eviction, you're fucked. You're not ever gonna find a place yeah. to live, not ever. I heard that. No one will ever rent to you, ever. Yeah. So it really, like, it really, like, that is just hindering me. If, if it wasn't for that eviction, like, they should really make a program, if anybody's listening. I mean, you said people listen to this, yeah. right? Like, yeah. that is huge. Like, people who have evictions have no chance. Even if it was an eviction that wasn't their fault, like say they were married and yeah. their husband decided to stay behind in the apartment that also had your name on it, yeah. but he decided not to pay rent, you're getting an eviction too, no matter yeah. what. So like, that's the truth. And yeah. it's not fair because I can't, now me and my kids have been homeless for three fucking years because, yeah. you know, something that, you know, it's I just, know. there should be programs or something for people for second chances on evictions. Like people who have had an eviction, like a second chance, you know? Like, because mm. that really like screwed my life over. Is it hard to get hotel rooms too, if you're homeless? It's, yeah, it's expensive. It's not only expensive, but I heard some clients, uh, if, if you quote, look homeless, the owners won't let you rent a room. Oh, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you have, there's no company allowed, like you can't have a friend over. And like in oh. lonely times like that, when you are like, homeless and you have somewhere to stay you want to kind of have someone come over and talk with you because you're not you don't want them to see you on the street so it's like yeah i'm like in a room so like come visit with me because i don't want you to see me when i'm not when i don't have a room and i'm not cleaned up and you know what i mean so yeah. like yeah it just sucks like hotel living is is not this it's not the business is there someone right now in your life that's gone through struggles and are doing great and just killing it out there that you look up to or aspire to be like 
Anyone positive in your life right now? No. Nobody? No. You just have you and your kids, and you're going to try to do better. Yeah, yeah. On My that, kids, I, I mean, I, I live for them. Like, you live for them? Yeah. Uh, on that subject, uh, do you have an email or some kind of cash app? Because let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. um, we have some incredible um, subscribers that have helped some of my other guests with jobs, um, help them navigate the system in their local communities. Um, you're in the, where do you live, in the, what area, what city? I'm homeless. Oh, I was homeless well, up until like four days ago. I'll, okay, I'll be honest. So we're in Rancho, so you're around Rancho I'm area? I'm in Rialto. I'm in where? Rialto. I'm in Rialto, but my okay. assistance is in Riverside because that's where I was homeless at. Okay. But I found a place in, in Rancho. Okay. So um, you're in the IE, in the Empire. Or not Rancho, Rialto, yeah, in, in, in the Empire, yeah. Okay, you're in the Empire. Some of the subscribers want to help you. Do you have like an email or a cash app? Yeah, my email is twinboysmommy143 at gmail. 143 at gmail, okay. Yeah, twinboys with an S. Okay. And then um, my cash app is, I don't know. If people are really going to send me money on cash app, that would be awesome. <laughs> I doubt it's, it. Though. It happens. They feel your story, and you're very genuine, and you love animals. That's a big thing. There's I lot, do. I most, do. I'm, I, I'm a lot of animal way. lovers. I'm a big animal lover. I think it, it was being a stripper had a lot to do with that. I mean, there's so much I didn't delve into. Like, I lived in Vegas. Yeah. And oh, I, gonna, I know you're in a hurry. I can't ask I know, I know, I know. But I, I used to play back. poker tournaments instead of going to work because I didn't want to dance. Any celebrity <laughs> uh, encounters? Um, yeah. Have you been with a celebrity? Yeah. Okay, can you name this? No, not at all. Mm. Okay, what does he do? Huh? What does he do? I just don't want to. I just don't. No, want no, to. What does he do? Singer oh, or, or a professional act? boxer? Oh yeah, in mm. Vegas or here? Here. Oh, okay, professional boxer. Big yeah. time or small time? Big time. Big up time. In, in, uh, it was in Upland. Okay. At the Tropical Way up there in Upland. Oh, Tropical Way, the strip club. Okay. Yeah, so I worked there too. Anyways, there, so there was there was an actor, a couple producers. Producers, big time. Yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah. What about police officers? No, I never, never. They're on a different team than I am. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but did you ever? I don't mess with the police. <laughs> no, I'm saying, you know, they pull you over, they ask no, you anything. No, okay. I never had that okay. action. No. Okay. Never. I've been tasered by a cop. Unfairly tasered. Just, yeah. Yeah, police brutality, for oh, sure. Man. Yeah, when I went to the porn convention and I was signing my, um, I had a DVD, I was on the cover of it, and I was yeah. signing my DVD for weirdos, and there was a, a professional baseball player that said he was a fan of mine, and okay. I was shocked. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know I was that popular. I'd only been doing it for like eight months, you know, okay. like, it was weird. What made you get out of it again? I just, it was, it was, I was going to either get big or, or it was time to get out. Okay, okay. So I got out before I got too big, too blown up. You know, I yeah. didn't want, I, I knew I wanted kids someday. I knew I want, you know? Yeah. Okay. And too many people had already found out about what I was doing. It was just screwed. It was bad. <laughs> it was all bad. You got that cash app? Oh, yeah. I didn't look for it. Uh, yes, I do. My cash app is, it would be the money sign, right? Uh-huh. And then N I C L Y N N 22. So Nick Lynn 22. Huh? Nicole, you're a really sweet lady. I love the fact that you love animals and you love your children. And I know you're going through a hard time. We make mistakes. I've made mistakes in the past. That's why I'm doing this. Um, get that record clean. As a matter of fact, I'm going to interview this attorney in a few weeks. She lives in the um, Inland Empire uh -huh. and she helps people with their records and she does not charge you. She's a part of an organization, That's cool. a big organization called All of Us or None. I'll be hopefully interviewing her in a few weeks. Cool. And I'm going to give you her contact and she's oh, cool. going to expunge that record. That would be way cool. Yeah, I had never been in trouble before and really it was a dumb decision. Yeah. It was like, um, a, like a, a, what do they call those when you make a decision? Like it was a, um, you don't think about what, you don't think you're like irrational or... <laughs> We were in a desperate situation. Desperate, yeah. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like a it was like I had to make a decision and me and my kids were hot and we were thirsty, we were dying and we needed to get somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. I'm laughing about it, but it's not funny. It's not it's not funny, but it was no. just like one of those things. You're awesome, Nicole. <laughs> uh hope you have a blessed day. Let's go get you those shoes. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right.